Hello everyone and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible and would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava and today we're investigating yet another theoretical distribution function, the slash distribution, quite a catchy name, isn't it, that can be useful to model stock returns or any particular data series of interest. The slash distribution is quite notable as it allows you to arrive at quite heavy tails, but not as heavy as the Cauchy distribution. So it is quite instrumental in covering and bridging the gap in this no man's land between the Laplace distribution and the Cauchy distribution. So if your distribution seems to have quite heavy tails, but not heavy enough to warrant the use of Cauchy, then slash distribution might be your answer. So let's investigate the math of it first. Here, and it's quite typical of many generalized distributions and more sophisticated and nuanced distribution functions, the slash distribution uses the logic of the Gaussian normal distribution functions, both cumulative and uh, density, to arrive at something different, something more general. What is quite notable and what makes it more simple than other uh, generalized distributions such as ARA or Johnson's SU is that it only relies on two parameters, the location parameter A and the scale parameter B. So here we have got just our uh, cumulative normal distribution of scaled X minus the weighted difference of probability density functions of scaled X and zero. And what is also quite important is that our distribution function is undefined for x equal to a because this denominator would be zero so we need to manually redefine it to be equal to one half if x is equal to a so roughly the half of our distribution and the probability density function which is going to be important as we will apply maximum likelihood estimation in this case is also manually redefined for the x equals a case as the denominator problem didn't go away anytime soon and it is equal to 1 over 2b times square root of 2 pi in in this case and in the general case when x is not equal to a it also relies on the probability density function of the normal distribution so first let's start with some plausible values of location and scale parameters so as usual make them equal to uh, sample mean and standard deviation respectively and then we will arrive at more uh, refined values in our maximum likelihood estimation. To do the maximum likelihood estimation we have to calculate the natural log of probability density function in every single case for every single observation so let's let's just start with that. So if our rank return so our x is equal to the location parameter so to our a we need to define our log a probability density function as natural log of this value over here given by this formula so 1 over 2 times the scale parameter b and we need to lock it as well times the square root of 2 pi so that's the special case done with and now we have to interpret the general case in the general case we need to refer to our scale parameter multiplying it by the ratio. In the numerator of the ratio, we have the difference between two uh, normal probability density functions. So norm as dist of our z-stat, that will be zero in that case. And as it's the probability density function, we need to input zero over here. Minus the normal probability density function of our scaled x. So here we need to have our rank return minus the location parameter divided by the scale parameter as is quite typical of any distribution function really so we refer to these parameters and log them as well and now our denom denominator is all done and dusted and we only need to divide by the square of x so we remember that it's cell e3 minus the location parameter a 
so locking it over here squared and the final touch is that we need to calculate the natural log of this probability density function close the parentheses and enforce our formula and uh, corresponding to that we would also have the value of our cumulative distribution function and again we need to keep in mind that we need to manually define it for x equal to a so if x is equal to our location parameter a we just manually input a half and if not we refer to the standard normal distribution of scaled x so e3 minus location divided by scale and as this is capital phi so cumulative normal distribution we need to input one over here and we need to subtract this ratio over here so scale parameter times the ratio of the difference norm as dist zero zero minus norm as dist and we can just copy this across for simplicity but we need to input zero here as it's still probability density function and we only get the denominator to worry about now and the denominator would just be x minus a so e3 minus the location parameter and we can close the parentheses enforce the formula and see that for the baseline case our tail is actually quite fat 8.16 percent uh it's actually quite quite heavy of a tail given that the normal distribution gives us zero and uh, ne a negligibly small probability of us reaching minus four percent and the empirical distribution function gives us 0.08 percent so can we actually get our tail to be more representative of our data well let's find out let's apply these formulas all the way down and calculate our log likelihood by calculating the sum of the natural logarithms of probability density functions and uh, get to use solver to optimize the log likelihood by varying our distribution parameters the a and b the location and scale so let's go data solver and input our objective function our log likelihood and get it to the maximum by changing our variable cells corresponding to location and scale parameters we need to allow our location parameter to be negative potentially so we need to untick this box over here but we want to require our scale parameter to be positive as it is a standard requirement on scale parameters so we need to add a restriction that our scale parameter is greater than zero but naturally we cannot get strict inequalities in uh, the solver uh, restriction criteria so we need to require it to be greater or equal to a very small positive number effectively requiring to be positive so let's state that it should be greater than 0.000001 and that would be a loose enough restriction for it to pick up any weird patterns that might exist there with the optimization of the log likelihood and we are ready to optimize this formula clicking solve and arriving at the optimal value of the log likelihood we can see that we have arrived at new values of location scale parameters and new values of the slash cumulative distribution function we see that our tails actually quite a bit fatter still than what should be the case given by our data but not as pathologic as the cauchy distribution predicts and if we compare the distributions graphically we can see that the slash distribution generates a surprisingly good fit around the mean but decouples from the empirical distribution function in blue we can look at the gray line uh, this is the slash cdf it decouples quite early on when we are talking about the tails so still the tails of the s p 500 return distributions are quite a bit thinner than of the slash distribution and of the cauchy distribution and it reinforces the need to look for an optimal distribution among the generalized ones like the error distribution or the johnson's su distribution so if you are interested please check those videos out as we have got them done already and that's all there is for the slash distribution and applying it to stock return fitting please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful in the comments below i'm eager to see any further suggestions 
on business, economics, or finance videos you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.